Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to talk about how to ID and beat algae in your reef tank. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Teats. Now the last little while I have been having some algae issues in my reef tank. Um, this is my frag tank. This is kind of more of my experiment tank, grow tank, you know, future fragging tank, all that type of jazz. And when the tank first started out, I had dinos in the tank. Um, I did the kind of elegance method of fighting the dinos, a little bit of a hybrid approach. Um, one of the things I did to do it was increase my nutrients. So due to lack of nutrients caused dino, raised all my nutrients that helped beat the dino. Then of course I had nutrients and then I had other allergies come. So after there I tried, I had a bit of Biropsis, a few other things in there, so then I used a dose of Fluke Nasal, or like a Reflux, one of those type of products. And the tank was looking awesome for a little while, and now boom, something else has taken over. So the one kind of lesson I learned is there is these kind of big bang, you know, semi-chemical approaches, but if it's killing off all the algae, you know, it's like taking out some of the other bacteria and messing with the balance and some other stuff. So needless to say, back to fighting a different type of algae now. Now, one of the first things you need to know in order to be able to beat or fight off uh, algae or bacteria is you have to know who your enemy is. You have to know what that is. You have to be able to ID it, identify it to know how to beat it. So the first step is IDing what algae we're actually dealing with. Now, taking a look at this, my first gut instinct would say that is kind of like a green turf algae. It's relatively short. Um, in my opinion, it generally would look too short to be hair algae. Um, especially you can see it on the rack there. Now this is an interesting one. This one took a little more work to figure out what the heck it was. And this one I actually learned is chrysophytes. And that's a different beast. So I have two different things that I have to fight off and kind of cure in the frag tank. You can see that one, the chrysophytes, which is more of like a, almost like a jelly type of bacteria. I don't even consider it an algae. Um, kind of what I learned about it actually is it is kind of not a dinoflagellates but it is a diatom in a sense so in theory that guy could feed off silicates could be one of the main sources in there so ideally I'd want to get a silicate test kit and see if I have silicates in the tank unfortunately that's been a little bit more of a struggle to find locally now if you're really into biology or getting really into the hobby a microscope is a really cool tool to have um, especially if you're finding something like dino it's going to help you figure out which strain it is you know, right some are photosynthetic some uv will work on some it won't like there's a lot that you can learn by diving deeper into it um, so let's take a look at this lg under the microscope and we'll figure out exactly what it is now it's actually super fascinating to see this under the microscope um, one of the biggest things that stood out to me is the strands kind of look like the green hair algae, but there is something different on it. Um, right in the center there, you can see that little kind of satchel that's on top of it. And it's kind of like a little bubbly thing kind of coming out the side. And that's what really made this guy stand out. They don't need a fancy microscope. I mean, they started around 50 bucks and can go up and get cheaper kids ones that can do the job for most things. Ideally, just make sure you get one that can do at least 400 times. Uh, now, a really great resource is actually LG, a problem solver's guide. Now, this is by Julian Sprung, and I will link to this one below, and if you guys want to pick it up, but it has become really handy for me for IDing stuff, because, you know, there's a whole section for green LG, and you kind of flip through it, and he includes microscope kind of pictures of stuff, and that's how you can really see up close, and that's how you can probably ID it, because, like, see those little satchels that are on there? That's exactly how I figured out what was inside my tank. So I know this guy is called Diversia, and it is a form of green hair algae. Um, so I kind of had the suspicion, but it's nice to know exactly what it is. So now I can look up the scientific name of Diversia and figure out exactly how to beat it online. Now from past experience, I know hydrogen peroxide can kill green hair algae. In nanos and tanks in the past, I've turned off the flow. I put a little bit in just like a little syringe and kind of just spot treated it. Now, when you're spot treating hydrogen peroxide, one mil per 10 gallons is kind of the general agreed safety amount. Uh, I also had another buddy where he would just put it on a doser. So, you know, if a 150 gallon tank, maybe I'd dose 15 mils a day on the doser. Now, you don't want to dose too much of it because it could burn a fish's gills or there is some potential harmfulness that could be if you overdose too much of it. But one mil per 10 gallons, you're safe there. Now, the other approach what I was thinking is because I have a whole frag rack of green hair algae. I actually picked up some hydrogen peroxide spray and this guy I'm actually going to lift the whole rack out and spray the whole rack. 
So this is going to be more of a little bit of a big bang approach. Now, the other alternative way that is probably a better solution, which I might do later, but is to take the frags out and give them a dip in hydrogen peroxide. Um, actually, I'll show you guys that one as well, because that works really well. And with Zoas, usually about a minute to a minute and a half would be your max. If you go two minutes plus, you can risk potentially melting the coral. But a minute seems to be fine. I've done it on tons, and it will clean up all of the algae in your plug. So I'll show you guys how to do that one, actually. 3% hydrogen peroxide. Uh, make sure it is 3%. You don't want to be using something like 35% because that will definitely do some damage. Far too strong. If you did have the higher percentage one, it'd be something you'd want, definitely want to dilute down. But at 3%, you are perfectly safe. So get enough in there that we can actually dip the frag. And we drop our frags in. Now you're going to see it start to react and start to bubble, which is completely normal. Uh, now the biggest thing is, is make sure you're paying attention to the time. I don't know if I would do this on a smooth skin acro, like a deep water acro, but uh, regular acro, zoas, pretty much everything else I've tried it on has been perfectly fine. So um, in general, those smooth skins I find don't like dips at all. So that's just kind of a general all around rule for that one. Now I would normally dip these guys off in water first, just to give them a little bit of a rinse but I'm going to leave the LG on there and we're just going to put them back into the tank. Now, because this frag rack is such a big area, I mean, yes, I could dip them all one by one, but as a little bit of the bulk method, we're going to spray peroxide onto the entire rack and hopefully hit most of this LG all in one go. We're all of the zoas on the rack and hopefully we'll be coating most of our LG as well. Just inside of your tank, obviously you're not going to be able to lift out the whole rock if your rock's glued together. So in that case, I would put some in a syringe, turn off all your pumps, all your flow, hold under water and spot treat it. So you're hitting it right at the source and with the flow off, it's gonna linger and sit there for a bit. Now, after a few days of treatment, um, the algae should start to turn white and die off. And that's the point where you know you've beaten it. Now this is also kind of treating the algae itself. You're not necessarily treating the problem. So if you have really high in nutrients, that's something you wanna take care of as well. Um, I put the clear water scrubber back on this tank. So it's been on there for about a month now. So Usually in a couple months of actually having it on there, it will outcompete this for nutrients, but I don't really want to look at an ugly frag rack in the meantime, so we're dealing with it now. Now the other weird algae I did earlier, the chrysophytes, um, that one, as far as I can tell, the only real driver for it is silicates. Now I have not been able to find a silicate kit, test kit locally, so I haven't been able to verify that, but I did add Brightwell's Pirit because that one said to suck silicates out of the water. So as a bit of a catch-all, if it is the course, then hope that will suck it out. Um, I've been accompanying that alongside manual removal, and so far it looks like it is dying off, so hopefully this combination is working. All right, it's been about a minute, so we'll get this back in the water. So don't underestimate the value of hydrogen peroxide. It is a great tool to have in your toolkit, especially if you're fighting off algaes. Um, I know you can manually remove some, but there's always a little bit of the base, right? And that's the part that's gonna grow back on you. Um, so something like this can kill off that base and rid it for good. So one mil per 10 gallons um, also makes a spectacular frag tip. But again, don't exceed about a minute, minute and a half maximum. Now this one, green hair algae, turf algae, they're a bit of a pain, but they're not bad at all to deal with. Um, if you have something like Baropsis, that would be something where you might want to step up and just use fluconazole or something on the tank. Now another great tool, if you guys are extra geeky, want, really want to get into it, is having a microscope. Uh, microscopes are amazing tools. I, this is still very new to me. I'm still learning how to use it. And if you guys are into more like the biology, the micro life, then I will start doing a lot more videos on that later. So if you are, let me know in the comments below. And if you are IDing stuff, uh, another really good book, Julian Sprung. I actually picked this up with it from one of my LFSs, but it is on Amazon. So I'll throw a link to that in the description below as well. If you guys want to pick it up and support the channel, I always pre appreciate you picking up through my Amazon link. But yeah, super cool thing. You know, just goes through all the different algaes and the big thing is if you have a microscope, you can see them up close. Like I would never would have figured out it was Diversia. I'd never heard of it before, right? But having this book and go in there, you can see the difference in the cell structures, especially when you got under a microscope and it really helps ID stuff. So super useful. And hopefully in about a week or so, this treatment will kill off all of the algae in there and hopefully the frag tank will be back to pristine again. So some great tools, check out the links below. If you enjoyed this, the like button. If you guys want to dig more into microscopes and microlife, 
let me know as well below because it's something that's starting to interest me. I'm learning myself. I'm happy to teach you guys as I go if that's something you're interested in too. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys on the next update.